I have a special guest. We don't always get to be in studio, if you want to put it that way, but today we are with Floyd Leo. Floyd is a uh, chair elder at Christ Community Church. Um, chairman of Council. Chairman of Council at, at Christ Community Church. And Floyd is uh, one of the many talented uh, men with the license to exhort. Uh, so uh, Floyd does a lot, I'm assuming, quite a bit of your preaching at Christ Community. Well, I've done some there. Uh, I've given up my license to re exhort. Oh, you have. I had so. it for 10 and a half years. Got and uh, then the duties of family and work. And uh, also, uh, I've been in jail ministry for 50 years this year. So we're, we're diving in. Floyd, why don't you share about the, di the different um, capacities you serve in at Christ Community and, uh, and for the classes? Sure. I'll let you take it away. Sure. Well, I like to say that um, I'm uh, a, a disciple of Jesus Christ, very skillfully disguised as a garbage man. Mm -hmm. I've been in the garbage business for 44 years and uh, was first um, elected as elder back in 1974. So almost 50 years uh, as a time period uh, serving as an elder in the Christian Reformed Church. Uh, we did a stint in uh, Milwaukee for a little while. And also, uh, this is my 50th year preaching in the jail. Wow. Schwing County Jail. Wow. Uh, so 2023 is uh, actually a 50-year celebration. I started off in 73, uh, wow. preaching in the jail. And uh, like I said, I've been an elder, uh, currently president of council. And uh, when the uh, jail ministry opened up after COVID, then I decided I can't do everything. Yeah. And it's more important for me to do jail ministry than pulpit ministry. So actually, the last time I preached from a pulpit was here in this congregation. Oh, you were at Oosburg? Yes. When was this? I yes. don't remember that. I don't know. You probably heard I was coming and left town. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> ah, fun. So t tell me a, a little bit about um, uh, the, the jail ministry. How does that get started? How do you get involved in that? And then what, what does that look like? What is your role? Well, my personal story is I was tricked into it. And uh, some of the listeners will uh, remember the name Joe Ribbons. And uh, he used to call me Leo. And uh, he said, yeah, yeah, Leo. He says, we got this uh, jail ministry. You should come and just see what it's all about. <laughs> and uh, so I did. I went four times. And uh, before you know it, he said, uh, Sunday, he said, yeah, yeah, Leo. He says, uh, I put you on the schedule. For the jail ministry, he said, it's in your, in your mailbox. He said, uh, you'll do fine. And at the time, we had uh, four people that went to a jail service. Um, we had an organist, because mm. he had an electric keyboard there. Oh, cool. We had a uh, soloist. We had a leader who uh, opened with prayer and introduced the songs. And we had somebody giving the sermon. So four people went to jail, uh, jail ministry. Now we have one. Uh, just because of the attrition of yeah. people and also because of uh, security. Yeah. And so we have one person there. And so I go every second Sunday to the Schwing County Jail and uh, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to the inmates. And uh, so my church knows that every second Sunday I'm gone. Yeah. What have been some things you've learned over 50 years of jail ministry? Well, I've learned that uh, <clears throat> not all Christians, in fact, probably no Christians, have really um, learned to live the perfect life. Mm. And uh, we are all are sinners. Uh, just some of us have gotten caught. Uh, others haven't gotten cough, caught. And um, there's a fellow there <clears throat> in jail named Donnie. And about six weeks, about six months ago, he, uh, he walked up to me. I, I was setting up, and he was one of the first ones in because he's a trustee. And uh, he said, I know you. And I said, okay. I said, I'm Floyd. We shook hands. I said, what's your name? And he gave me his name. And uh, I said, well, have we met on A Street or, you know, at a restaurant? No, he said, um, you used to preach with Joe Ribbons in the old jail on 6th Street. Mm. I think it was the fourth floor. And uh, I said, Donnie. I said, that's in the 70s. 
And I said, how old were you? He said, 17. Mm. And I said, what were you in for? He said, drugs. Mm. I said, Donnie, what are you in for now? He said, drugs. And, you know, he can, re he can lead the group in the Apostles' Creed, carries his Bible. In fact, I had eight, eight inmates there uh, this past Sunday, and they all had Bibles. Uh, a number of them had their award Bible. And in order to get the award Bible, you have to, in a correspondence course, you have to answer 13,440 questions. Whoa! Now, how many of us as believers have answered 13,440 questions but, about Scripture? Yeah. Very rare. Wow. Uh, so these guys uh, have dedicated themselves to learn about Scripture. And uh, a lot of them have won, have won the award Bible, and they can go on and win a correspondence book also. Uh, but um, I should say a concordance. But... Uh, they haven't gotten everything right in their life. Yeah. And that's why they're incarcerated. Yeah. Now, usually it's drugs. Uh, sometimes it's domestic abuse. Sure. Uh, sometimes it's alcohol. Um, once in a while, bad checks. But I think if we could eliminate drugs and alcohol, we could get 90% of the guys out of there. Wow. They, they say um, to understand how great... The grace of God is. We have to understand the depth of our depravity. There's some John Calvin quote mm -hmm. to that effect. Right. Have, have you have you found that that's the case um, for you as you just understand the depth of the depravity in the world through jail ministry? Like you've you've recognized, wow, God's grace is great. And do you see that in the inmates as well? Do they have a better understanding of grace than? than maybe the average person at Oostburg CRC or Christ community. Does the average inmate have a better understanding of grace yeah. than the average parishioner? Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. What I about don't know because I don't know truly their heart. I don't know if they, right. if they um, understand that they're saved fully and freely. Hmm. By God's grace. They say they've trusted Christ as their Savior, but there may be that lingering doubt that mm. uh, my 13,440 answers count for something. Mm. Mm. And they don't. Mm. Yeah. Or, or like I've got to undo, I've got to outwork some of my bad works. I've got to make it up to my wife, yeah. to my children. Yeah, first. Well, before, you know, yeah. once you cross, once a husband crosses that line of infidelity, there's no turning back. No. You can't undo the clock and turn the clock back. And you can't undo that <clears throat> with your spouse. And you can't undo that with your children once there's a divorce. There's no outworking it. There's only grace. Yeah. That's the only way forward. Exactly. That's a great example. And I, and I think that um, most men uh, who have been unfaithful, have walked away from their marriages, uh, would love desperately to have a normal, air quotes, relationship with their children. Uh, <clears throat> but that's pretty rare mm. to get that done. Mm. Mm. And uh, they, let's face it, there's a lot of divorce. There's a lot of drugs. <clears throat> there's a lot of um, violation of the, the uh, second Decalogue yeah. of the commandments yeah. in jail. Yeah. Do you, do you think... 50 years in jail ministry has uh, given you a, a brighter outlook on the world. Look what God's able to do through brokenness. Or has it given you a dimmer outlook on the world? Look how depraved um, mankind is. Ourselves included, of course. It's given me uh, more understanding hmm. of people and of the world. A greater understanding, a greater acceptance of people. Hmm. That, yeah, you know... I've made mistakes too. Hmm. How can we be praying? This is always my closer. How can we be praying for Christ Community Church or for the Leo family? Oh, thank you. We are uh, looking for a uh, pastor for music and for youth mm -hmm. at our church. And so pray for our search community there, our search committee there at Christ Community. And then also our daughter Dawn is getting married on May 31. Congratulations. To Peter Gesh. 
And uh, so we're excited about that. And uh, so pray for a godly marriage and uh, a wonderful time of celebration. Yeah, excellent. Thank you, Floyd. Okay, thanks, Zach.